Hi, I'm Ariel. You're watching She Wants Addiction, and today I'm going to be talking about two books by the same author. Tanith Lee is the author that I chose. So I was participating in the Spring Into Sci-Fi Readathon. These are two sci-fi books from like the late 70s, early 80s, and the whole reason that I even picked these up initially was for the covers, which are pretty hilariously <laughs> bad. Vintage sci-fi illustrations. I freaking live for them. So these are by the same author, like I said. I did read them chronologically, so I read Electric Forest first. And this is basically the story of Magdala. Now in her futuristic society, everyone is kind of genetically engineered, but there still is occasionally like accidents where the contraception fails or whatever. When the kid is born, they're kind of deformed. So Magdala is like physically deformed. She kind of walks with a limp that's more of less of a limp and more of just like kind of dragging her body along. She is literally referred to as like ugly, like literally they just call her that as her nickname. She's really the only deformed person in her little area of society. And she has kind of like a really menial job that she goes to. She has to work long hours and then she comes home and she has a really small Spartan living apartment because it's all she can afford. So what happens is this mysterious rich guy kind of appears and basically offers her the chance to be made beautiful. Now of course there's a catch to it because he's not really doing this out of the goodness of his heart. It's an experiment where basically there's this thing called consciousness transfer where he takes a body that he's grown and sort of puts her original body on life support and then projects her consciousness into this other body that he's manufactured. And of course she accepts because it's really her only chance to get away from what is like gonna be a pretty shitty life. Like she's not really going anywhere. It's basically a mystery. She has to figure out who this woman is. He's cloned, why he wants her like in her body and to act like her and like what's going on. The rich dude is kind of a huge asshole. He will call her names and constantly like harp on the fact that she's ugly and unattractive and is just like really mean to her. Like he, you could tell he's, he's not trying to like help her. He's just trying to like get a test subject for his little experiment. Halfway through the book, they start like basically hate fucking, which I mean, I'm not really mad about on her part because she's like never really had a physical relationship or any sort of physical contact because everyone shuns her. So I'm not really mad that like she would leap at the opportunity even if this guy's an asshole. But um, as far as he goes, the woman that he's cloned her from is kind of like an ex of his. So it's really shady that he's like trying to sleep with her. I, I don't know, I just freaking hate it. And then also I hated the ending of this book. I mean, I guess I hate both endings. I hate the initial ending which is that the whole time, spoiler alert, <laughs> he has also been under the consciousness transfer program. So he too has like a deformed, not really deformed, but a really badly burned body that he kind of transferred himself out of into this nice, rich body. So you find out that he's basically the same as her. And you also find out that he's like essentially the hero of the story. Like he was doing this for the right reasons. Like he didn't want the consciousness transfer technology to get into the wrong hands. And the woman that he cloned was basically a, one of the scientists overseeing the project that he was romantically involved with and wanted to sell the secrets of the consciousness transfer to different like political groups for espionage purposes. And basically you find out that this guy that's been a terrible person to Magdala, the entire book is supposed to be the hero of the story and it's freaking garbage. He would like, also drug her body. Like he basically keeps her capsule with her original body in it hostage. She basically has to listen to everything he says because if she doesn't, he can just kill her body. He can poison her, he can drug her. And he does several times like throughout the book. So I have a problem with that terrible abusive personality. Basically the end was like, he did it for all the right reasons though. It's like the ends justify the means, which no, they don't. The book has like a, like a kind of an epilogue that basically says this was not, this whole story was not real. It was just kind of a simulation that we made up of what would happen if consciousness transfer technology became widely available. So basically it's a story in a story and fuck, I hated it so much. It just makes the whole story like irrelevant. Like I don't understand why we needed to tack that extra thing on there. You could have just ended it with Magdala, she kills the, the other lady and uh, 
the fucking asshole guy dies. So basically she's victorious in the end of it, even after everything that she's been through. You could have just ended it there and it would have been a much more succinct ending than trying to make it like, oh, this is just a simulation, this is just a study, fuck that. I will say I like Tanith Lee's writing a lot, except for her descriptions of like the buildings and shit like that that's really extra but her writing and her I think it was really easy to get into but the actual story of this one like I fucking hated it and I hated the characters I feel like they were assholes now the second one silver metal lover I like this one a lot better it's a lot sillier like less of a serious serious plot if you want to call it that but it's basically a romance novel kind of like in disguise as sci-fi it really is interesting if you like thinking about where the line between like machine and man and like when do machines become conscious and what makes somebody like human or being i don't know i think this book is a really good exploration of that the main girl who's like a 16 year old falls in love with this new sophisticated robot that's released and gives up her rich lifestyle to go and live with him basically and like barely scrape by and none of her friends or her mom really understand it being 16 years old she should have been a little more like put together i feel like like i feel like there was a lot of like her just crying and i was like do we really need another description of her crying like we get it and i understand like it's being a teenager and it's fucking awful but <laughs> but i do feel like at times i was like man i wish she would really just like be stronger i mean the crying thing kind of stopped after a while like she definitely undergoes like a character change where she starts acting more mature and she kind of sees where her priorities are and how kind of shitty everyone is around her. I really liked the characters in this, I will say that. Her best friend Clovis, gay and with a super sarcastic wit. He's really cutting. I don't know, I really liked him as a character. And then her other friend is kind of like basically this airheaded actress that really only cares about herself. And I didn't really like her as much and she does end up being a villain of the story. And then there was her mom who was super overbearing and like in her business and like trying to just like micromanage her down to the last detail which I think is accurate for a lot of parents. So I would say if you like romance or sci-fi or robots or anything of that nature to definitely read this, it's really good. He gets recalled by the company that made him and I would have been happy with that ending even though it was a tragic ending, but I feel like this author has this thing where she always has to make the ending somehow happy. Later, she basically gets a sign that he's not completely dead. Like he's still communicating with her through other electronics. And I was like, that's just like one step too far. Like, okay, the romance between a human and a robot is already like stretching the imagination, I feel like. And then to add in that he's still alive, he has a soul, we'll be together again. I don't know if that was supposed to be like a reincarnation element or what it was, but that was like too far for me. But I'm also thinking if they made these robots so sophisticated, wouldn't they have considered the possibility that someone might develop feelings for one of them. If they were gonna walk around among people and play songs and do whatever else they were supposed to do, like didn't anyone sort of foresee this? Like I don't understand why there wasn't things set in place to like keep it from happening. Of course, then there would be no book. And it's kind of portrayed that Silver, which is the robot, is kind of malfunctioning. And that's the reason that he's recalled, is like he's not supposed to be able to have feelings, but he does. I will say one of my favorite characters is Data on Star Trek. So that whole kind of robot humanity, anything to do with that. And especially if you add in a romance in there, it's even more interesting to me, like interspecies or interracial, any relationship between two very different people or types of people, or I don't know how to describe it. Anything like that is just like super interesting to me. Apparently Tanith Lee is a pretty prolific author. So I think I would definitely read something by her again. I think her writing really puts you in the person's mindset and takes you there. So I think she's a really good descriptive writer. So this made me really kind of want to get back more into like older sci-fi, like 70s, 80s. It's also pretty hilarious to see like what they thought that the futuristic technology would be like. Because there's references in here of like her having like a futuristic tape deck. And I was like, wow, we weren't even on like discs yet. It's just funny to see the differences between what they thought our future would be like and what it's actually like. I love that, like the future, but it's not quite right. I don't know why, I like, I fucking love it. Let me know if you guys have read either of these or what your interest level is in sci-fi because I might start reading more or doing more reviews on here. Peace.